Ravel Monograms 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. Coming up next on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Welcome back model car builders to another great unboxing video where today we will be looking at the Ravel Monogram 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. This kit originally came out in 1982 from Monogram. It's a good kit. I've built one back in the past and everything. And now I'm going to share with you all the different types of box arts that came with this kit back in the past. The muscle car craze of the 60s started with the 1964 Pontiac GTO. What started as an option package on the Tempest went on to shape an entire generation of high performance machines. Today the letters GTO command respect. And for 1968 Pontiac introduced the first ever Enduro bumper on their Pontiac GTO. And this year, 1969, they brought out the Judge package which included the spoiler on the back and the decals. So this great kit from Monogram originally came out in 1982 and it's been with us ever since. Now unfortunately in this review I have started on this model and I don't know where the decal sheet went to. <laughs> so anyway that's kind of unfortunate for me but I wanted to include this in my unboxings because uh, this kit is not currently on the market as far as I know. Anyway, looking at the box, you see a photographic image of our GTO. Good for reference. E up on the side here, we have our features. The car is eight and three quarters inch long. There's 64 pieces, so it's a good starter kit. Molded in orange, eh. Classic 69 GTO considered the daddy of all muscle cars. Performance parts include a Hearst shifter, wide tires, and rear sp rear spoiler, highly detailed 400 cubic inch engine, authentic judge decals in three colors, which I'm missing, molded in orange and clear with plated parts and black vinyl tires. Um, and then here's our colors here that it calls for. Now I might have taken the decals out and put them to the side back in the day, and then we got the High River Flood and I lost my entire decal box which is unfortunate. I had some stuff in there from Denmark. Anyway, the end of the box looks <laughs> like the front. There's the back end of the built-up uh, 69 Pontiac GTO and our interior. And this kit is for ages, or sorry, yeah, ages 10 and up, skill level two, needs glue and paint. So now we'll just back that out. This around. Okay, and then there we've got our box. There's also a 68 Pontiac GTO made by uh, Monogram. And that one pops out as a street machine every now and again. I have both. I built the street machine when I was young, and I got this to uh, convert the body pieces over. Okay, so we got our instructions here. Then our nice chrome tree. Now, like I said, I started to work on this, so I glued the nose on, as well as the spoiler, and painted it yellow. So there's our body, our hood, our interior, which I painted black. Okay, this is what I haven't touched, <laughs> so our orange components. There's the engine and suspension bits. The chassis with the radiator and some hoses in it. And then more of our engine and our wheel backs. Now I gotta be careful here. There's our bench seat in the back. Here's our glass in a bag. Now unfortunately this is that stupid flip open lid thing. And on my other GTO I've actually lost one of these. Which is the uh, armrest with the door latch. Probably popped out of the corner somewhere, never to be seen again. I really hate those flip boxes. There's our dashboard that I was working on. Whoop, bucket seats, tires. 
What else? More tires in the flippy seat. <laughs> we got our steering wheel there. And I do believe there's an exhaust pipe and the other armrest right here. Somewhere. There. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna clear this box out of the way and then we'll look at our plastic or look at our instructions. Here comes the judge. And that was a popular skit on TV's Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, which the GTO was named after. And here's our uh, first page of our instructions. And what's interesting about it is that it says, Your monogram kit features the 370 horsepower Ram Air 4 engine, hood tack, rear spoiler, and complete judge graphics, which I lost. <laughs> but anyway, let's just zoom our camera back. And we'll open up our instructions. Yeah, the original kits were monogram. Kind of forgot that. I think in the intro. Anyway, what's nice about this is they have all the color callouts. And they've also included the paint codes. So like code 72 is carousel red. And on we go. Which is really nice. And then the stripe combination. So on the carousel red car, you got the yellow and blue stripe. On the lime light green metallic car, you got a white and olive stripe. Then it goes on, which unfortunately I lost those. So let's zoom in on the steps. All right, so step one shows our three piece wheels going together. And you got a wheel back that clicks in on the axles, much like the typical monogram style kits. So remember to get this done right, because you only have one chance to click it on the car. And then after that, if you messed up, you, there's no way to get the wheel off. So then we've got our tire going in here, and then our front wheels, which look kind of like the Magnum 500 style. And then we've got our front suspension piece, and our wheels pop on there. And like I said, you want to make sure if there's any seam lines on these pegs to remove them and have that very smooth, so that when you pop the wheel on, it will rotate. Otherwise, you'll be locked on the little piece of sprue, or piece of flash, pardon me. And now we've got the typical fold-out monogram style instructions, which go across this way. So I'll just drag this this way so we can see everything. So here we have our frame with the molded in inner aprons for our fenders. And uh, our front end will glue up inside there. It does say to remove that hose there for your radiator as well as the fan shroud. And then in panel four, we get into the fan shroud itself with the radiator and support wall. So glue those two together and drop it right in the front. And then here we get into our Pontiac 400 engine. Oh, I can sneak both panels in here. Okay, that's good. So you got a left and right hand side engine block, which is, it says light blue, but it should be the Pontiac engine blue, which was a light metallic blue. Then you want to paint your transmission with your steel and aluminum colors. Then you got your intake manifold and your carburetor. Both of these are called for aluminum. Then you got your fan and your fan belt and your alternator, which is an aluminum one. You got to paint this. It's not uh, chrome. So there's our panels. So now we have panel seven, which is quite longer. So here you've got your front water pump cover and your belts and pulleys and fan glue on it. Then it glues to the front of your engine block. You've got your left and right hand exhaust manifolds, your cylinder heads, and then you got your valve covers and this nice sticker, which I don't have anymore, which goes on there for your valve covers. And then we'll just move this over here for panels eight and nine, which show our engine block being dropped into the front of our car. And then we have the rear axle, which is two pieces, so an axle top and bottom. It also includes the mufflers and our drive shaft, so again, very easy to put in. Remember to scrape your seam lines off those pegs for your wheels, otherwise they won't rotate. And for panel 10, we pop our wheels onto the axles, and like they say, don't use any glue here. And then drop the whole thing into your chassis pan. So that'll glue in there, and the end of your different or your drive shaft will pop into the end of the transmission. Then we move into panels 12 and 13, 
which show our glass being dropped into the car. Again, there's something in the middle here you got to remove. You put in your little rear view mirror there too before your glass goes in. And paint the inside of your roof satin black. And then here we have our firewall and you add in the little thingy here. <laughs> and our brake master cylinder will go in there and all this is painted satin black inside under your hood. Panels 14 and 15 right here. So we've got the front end of our car, the enduro bumper with the little chrome plated grills that pop in and then the bumper pops on and there is a license plate or at least there was that glues on the front and then here we have our dashboard very simple just a one-piece dash tells you how to paint it all inside and then you've got your steering column which pops on that little thing there and your Pontiac steering wheel Panel 16 and 17 show the dashboard being dropped into the interior bucket. And there is a gear shift lever which pops in a hole here. This is all painted satin black. And then here we have our two armrests going in. And the two at the back. And then our seat right there. Panels 18 and 19 show the completion of the interior bucket. With our two bucket seats which have a front and a back which glue in. And then our interior bucket pops under into the car here, and you paint the underneath of it satin black. For panels 20, it shows the chassis being popped in underneath the body, and it shows you where to glue the tops of the fender wells, which is up and under here, into our engine bay. Then panels 21 and 22 here, are showing our rear spoiler being glued on with our judge decals going on there as well as the rear bumper which pops onto the back here and then here we have our uh, air cleaner this is the ram air type one there's a battery going on there and then we have a radiator hose and the top of our ram air air cleaner which glues on there and then we get into our final panel here which is panel 23 showing the optional side marker lights you can glue on there our hood with a tachometer with the missing decal going on and then our rear view mirror here and then oh this is a painting so there's a little grill up top on your hood we paint it flat black and then your door handles and all of that are painted aluminum and that completes our look at our Ravel monogram 69 Pontiac GTO instruction sheet now let's take a look at the plastic parts. And here we have our body shell for our 1968 Pontiac GTO. And I did work ahead a little on this a long time ago. Uh, we've got our spoiler glued on the back and our front enduro bumper. But, you know, overall this is a nice body. The paint job is terrible as we'll see as I bring this up to the camera. But anyway, there it is. And that's got the correct GTO side profile. You get your nice door handles on here. This little strip at the bottom would be chrome plated. GTO letters up here on the front fenders. And it's got the triangular type rear tail lamp. Or side marker light, pardon me. Not a tail lamp. <laughs> Underneath the hood is quite nice. You've got all that great detail. You even have the steering shaft down here. And uh, this would all be painted satin black. The proper style uh, front valence panel here with the top of our radiator and then up front here you got the nice grill with the little grills underneath and these rectangular style parking lights which were the 69 version in 68 they wrap around the sides just so you know the difference <laughs> underneath it's pretty smooth couple little mold marks in there you can see I mount these on a pop can so this circular pattern is from the pop can uh, where it's not get allowing paint in. <laughs> a couple more little mold marks, but overall a very nice, clean, simple body. Along the back here you got uh, the door latch. Now the camera can't pick it up, but the paint pooled here and made little dots in. Same as on the top of that spoiler. I don't know. Don't know if you can see that, but anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to have to sand this down or something and try to do it yellow again. 
Now you may be wondering about the hood. Well, yeah, let's just move that. There it is, glued on the tachometer. Again, uh, crinkles up here with the paint. I hate it when paint goes bad. What do you guys do? Maybe I should uh, strip this with Easy Off Oven Cleaner and start again. Anyway, let me know in the comments below how you handle that. Uh, underneath it's got the bracing under the hood, which is pretty much correct. And uh, yeah, so there we go. So how does this fit into the body, you might ask? Goes in nice. And as you can see, the hood gap is pretty minimal on here. There's a little bit of a rocking going on. <laughs> but it should look good on the shelf anyway. So that is the body for our 69 GTO. So I thought I'd gather up all the parts together, and as I was trying to find them for the interior, I noticed that I'm actually missing the steering column for two models. So I'm going to have to make up another one using, I don't know, sprue or something. But it's kind of a pain when you're going through these things and you discover you're actually missing a bunch of stuff. Anyway, here's our interior tub, molded as one piece. And again, this is 1982, so they're starting to get out of the tubs and starting to get into individual panels. But this tub is really excellent, actually, as we'll see in a bit. Again, I painted this flat black for the carpets. I've got to paint the satin on the seats and the door panels which uh, I could do with some clear paint, actually. Now, the back seat and all these components, of course, being separate, I was able to hook them up on a piece of cardboard and then paint them with um, trim clad, I guess it was, satin black. So here's our little armrests for the back and the front, our steering wheel, our dashboard, and our seats. So let's just bring this up to the camera. I just move these out of the way. So here on in our interior you can actually see that it does have some very nicely done door handles. Now the armrests were separate so that gives it more of a proper three-dimensional look once you glue them on. There's a center console there. We've got our all our pedals up front. There's a parking brake. The, the uh, clutch, the brake, and our gas pedal. Yeah, all the window cranks look correct on there. Overall really nice. Then underneath, of course, we've got the little panels there, which will go underneath our chassis and poke through. Not really much in mold marks under here. There's a couple there, but they get covered by the seats, which is always a good location for those things. So I just move that out of the way. Now looking at one of our bucket seats here, the front pattern matches the back seat. Again, nice tuck and roll. Got to paint it up from underneath here, showing some of the orange. Two-part seats, which of course fit nicely into our interior tub. Whoops, I had some glue. <laughs> Same with the bottom of the seat here. It's almost like the real GM seats. In my, in my old Oldsmobile, I had to pull the back seat out once. There's how it would click in. So again, very nice and neat. And we've got our dashboard. I do believe this needs a second coat of satin. But again, lots of room to put a little wood grain underneath there. And then you got your three pods for your instruments. And the nice big glove box, the little heater vents going on there. Those are adjustable, of course. And, uh, yeah, very nice on the dashboard, which again will click into here on the front of our bucket. Fits in quite nicely. And then we've got our little Pontiac steering wheel, which I didn't paint. And again, I wish I knew what happened to the steering columns. But that would go in there. And then, of course, nice detail on our little armrests. There, they look correct. They even have the door pull inside there, so in they go. And that essentially is our Pontiac GTO interior. Next up, we have our GTO chassis sitting here, and of course our inner fender aprons, which are molded in place. There's the other side of the steering column, or yeah, with the uh, steering box up front going into our tie rods. And 
it should connect to the one coming out of the body. Although I've got one that's bent up, so I don't know how that's going to work. A couple of mold marks to uh, get rid of, but as we turn this over, you can see the nice detail of the gas tank under there. And the full perimeter frame. This, of course, is an A-body GM, much like my Oldsmobiles and whatnot. There's our radiator. This is the fan shroud. Then we've got a radiator hose here. So these pieces need to come out. And then you can paint this whole thing satin black. And it should end up quite nice. Yep, once you're all done. Next up we have the parts tree that includes our radiator wall and support. And our engine, the 400 cubic inch. There's the top of our rear axle, the front suspension components, the battery, alternator, fan, fan belt, and then there's parts on there, probably interior parts. So let's just take a look at this up close. Now you notice this big box sticking out here at a funny angle. That's actually for the battery. And you just glue the little Delco top on here at an angle. Should look correct. And a couple little mold marks on the back, which you can take care of, of course. But the detail is quite nice, considering for a simple kit. Starter motor is all included on the engine block, same with the oil filter. A little bit of flash here and there, but overall quite nice. You can see the Delco name on top of the battery, which is a nice addition. So overall, very clean and crisp, typical of the monogram style. This parts tree consists of the undercarriage pieces as well as engine detail. So here we have our rear axle with differential and exhaust pipes, all molded as one piece except for the top. Remember on these pegs to clean them up. Then we've got our cylinder heads here, front cover, our exhaust manifolds. This is a windshield wiper uh, device. And then we've got our master cylinder going on here. So again, just bring this up. I've lost an exhaust. Uh, good detail on these parts. And of course, get the springs molded in there as well. A couple little mold marks on here. Could be nice to get rid of them. You might not see that one because it's right up against the body on the inside. Still good detail on these parts. So again, another mark of excellence for monogram. Here's our final orange components. And we've got our wheel backs. We've got our air cleaner assembly for the 400 gram air, as well as our intake manifold here. There's our gear shift lever and our little carburetor bit. Actually, the carburetor. <laughs> Now, one thing, if you ever get one of these monogram or valve flip-top boxes, first thing I would suggest is put everything in a Ziploc bag. Because, like I showed here, I've lost a whole bunch of things. And it's kind of really annoying. <laughs> so I can never complete this thing as it was supposed to be. And, uh, yeah, it, a little bit of oversight would have actually saved the day. A couple of Ziplocs. So here we got our wheels, and... It, it's got the finned brakes in here, which was a GM cool thing. It looks like drums all the way around, but still quite nice and a lot of good detail on this kit. Now we get into my favorite parts tree, which of course, as you all know from watching this show, is guess what? Yeah, you're right, the chrome. So there we've got our Magnum 500 style wheels here, as well as the inner grills and the rear bumper. This one is the 69 style with the longer tail lamps with the bar in between. And then we've got our uh, valve cover sitting here as well as our rear view mirror and a little shift rod or something. So anyway, bringing this up to the camera again, you can see the nice grill detail in our fronts here. These ones have the flip up headlights. And did you know there's actually GTOs out there with fixed headlights? The flip-ups were such a popular option that the fixed headlights are kind of the rare one. Anyway, great detail on the chrome. Oh, there's our rear view mirror here. On the back, a couple of mold marks, but these get shoved into the front of that plastic enduro bumper. So they do kind of disappear. But again, 
nice detail on those wheels. So there's our chrome. And here we have our glass components. We've got our windshield and then inside our little parking lights and then our rear window. And this again is molded as one piece, which is sort of the old school way of doing it. But it does go in there nicely. There are some mold marks here, which you could sand out and then paint these runners your interior panel color or just cut them off right here and here and then glue it in as best you can. Now this thing was sealed in a bag and even though that happened there's still scratches in the glass so I, I don't know how what was going on with this but anyway there it is and again very nicely done and very simplistic easy for a weekender kit or somebody that's just moving up from snap togethers. And since I'm missing my decal sheet, I will say, last but not least here, for my model anyway, we have these Goodyear steel-belted radials, which are sort of a late edition type tire for this kit, because really it should be sitting on some Goodyear Polyglass GTs, which were a bias-belted tire, not a radial. But at any rate, we've got some raised lighters on here, which is quite nice. I do believe since this kit originally came out in 82, these would have been hot new tires, for that time period, so they wanted to include them in the kit. Still, you do get some nice tread pattern on there. And then on the back, there is no lettering, so you could flip these over and mount them on the car without the lettering sticking out, and then find some lettering that said Goodyear Polyglass GTs on here, even though the tread pattern wouldn't quite be right. Still, these are a nice solid tire, which you can use in your spinner to grind down the edges of the tread. Here's our build-up of the 1969 Pontiac GTO. I built this one a long time ago again. Turned the tires around, used my tire spinner and painted on those nice red line tires. This is a metallic blue-black. Very nice color. It again is another uh, Canadian tire lacquer paint. So you got to be careful with lacquer because it will melt the plastic. There's our tail lights. Again I painted these with Tamiya. I do believe the Macho license plate came from an El Camino. There's only one flaw on here, and that is this orange that's showing through on the fender. I don't know what happened, it's sort of like a rip. But anyway, I built this a long time ago with a friend of mine. We did it in my dad's garage, painting this metallic dark black blue. His car he did in a light blue. And uh, actually, if I just turn this around a bit, you can see he did a little bit of an overspray onto my car. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can catch it. Anyway, there's a couple little metallic blue specks on here. But overall, this model kit went together great and was a joy to build. And if you have one, please share it over at our website. at uh, On our Facebook page, actually, I should say. And that completes our look at the Ravel Monogram 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. And if you've built this model in the past, why not share it on our Facebook page today? Well, we hope you enjoyed that great review of the Ravel Monogram 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel if you love these great videos and want to see more. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new one, you're the first one to see it. And if you want to see all our available model kits at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our website, www.monster-hobbiesonline. Or if you're in the area, come in and visit us. We'd love to see you. So until next time, everyone, happy model building.